Hello, welcome back to Storyhouse. Today, we're discussing a book called How We Tick, The Importance of Chronobiology for Our Lives. It's about our body's important and fundamental function called the biological clock. Just like Thoreau searching for the meaning of life at Walden Pond, we all desire to face each day with vitality. We might have read various books and learned practical techniques to manage our well-being, like exercise, emotional control, and healthy eating. Of course, there's also advice on getting a good night's sleep. These techniques can address specific issues, but if we don't tackle the core problem, they might not lead to lasting results. Energy management is a holistic approach, and merely focusing on techniques might not provide a comprehensive solution. Think about it. Feeling tired is a bodily sensation, and who controls this feeling? It's our biological clock, which we're discussing today. Speaking of energy management issues, they all come down to our biological clock. You've heard of the concept before. Some people naturally wake up at 6 a.m., and we attribute this to their biological clock. But do we truly understand it? Let me ask you a few questions. Is the biological clock innate or acquired? Is it unique to humans? Does the biological clock really exist within our bodies? Upon reflection, we realize that our understanding of the biological clock is quite limited. This isn't surprising. The scientific study of the biological clock is relatively new, spanning just a few hundred years for humans and a few decades for in-depth research. Additionally, recent findings in this field haven't fully reached the public. Today, we're discussing a popular science book written by a leading expert in this field, Professor Till Roeneberg from Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich. He spent decades studying biological clocks of various life forms, including mushrooms and humans. After reading this book, you'll discover that the biological clock isn't a simple internal timekeeper, but rather a complex regulatory system. It's akin to a conductor, orchestrating coordination between the clock's internal components and synchronizing with the external environment. The biological clock has significant impacts on both our bodies and mental states. The more we understand it, the better we comprehend ourselves, making it easier to find personalized energy management strategies. I'll break down the main content of this book into three parts. What is the biological clock? What's the purpose of the biological clock? And finally, how does understanding the biological clock help you? This book has a unique approach. It comprises 24 chapters, each addressing a different aspect of the biological clock. However, the author doesn't jump into scientific principles right away. Instead, each chapter begins with a short story. In the first chapter, the author paints a scene of a typical morning in a household. It's a weekday morning, and the daughter groggily gets out of bed to brush her teeth coincidentally crossing paths with her equally tired father. They seem to overlook each other, not even exchanging greetings. Meanwhile, downstairs, the mother and younger brother are energetically preparing breakfast. The brother excitedly shares his plans to visit a dinosaur exhibition with his mom. If this were the opening scene of a movie, you might wonder if something unpleasant happened between the father and daughter. However, from the perspective of a chronobiologist, this scene is quite ordinary. It illustrates a fundamental fact. There are different types of time preferences in the world corresponding to different biological clocks. The most common time preferences fall into two categories. First, there's the lark type, those who naturally wake up early but might feel sleepy earlier in the evening like the mother and brother. Second, there's the owl type, those who struggle to wake up early and enjoy staying up late possibly waking up grumpy if it's too early, like the father and sister. So why do these different time preferences exist? The earlier story offers some clues. Mom and the younger brother are awake and alert in the morning, while dad and sister feel drowsy. This indicates that one's time preference isn't related to gender or age. Some might suggest that it's a matter of willpower. Those with strong willpower might persist in waking up early and maintaining good habits. The philosopher Immanuel Kant was such a person. He woke up early every day, worked, 
and then took a one-hour walk at precisely 3.30 p.m. For decades, his daily routine was as reliable as a clock. Did you notice something? People often associate time preferences with willpower because they believe that the biological clock is shaped by habits developed over time. But is that really the case? The first person to delve into this question was a French astronomer. While studying Earth's rotation, he discovered that even without sunlight, mimosa leaves would stand tall during the day and droop at night, as if they could sense the time without needing light. This suggests that the biological clock isn't a passive response to environmental changes. It's an innate pre-programmed system. So where exactly is this biological clock located? Scientists have been trying to unravel this mystery since the 20th century. Let me share the conclusions directly. The human body's biological clock is governed by a master group of neurons called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, located in the brain's visual center just behind the base of our nose. Thirty years ago, a woman in the United States unfortunately damaged her suprachiasmatic nucleus during brain tumor surgery. As a result, her biological clock disappeared along with the tumor. Her sleep-wake patterns became irregular, and physiological indicators like body temperature no longer exhibited cyclic changes. You might think, even if the biological clock is innate, why do people have different time preferences? This brings us to a significant characteristic of life. Our internal biological clock and the external world's time aren't perfectly synchronized. The external world's day, defined by Earth's rotation, is approximately 24 hours. However, individual biological clocks might be slightly shorter or longer than this, varying from person to person. In other words, the biological clock isn't precise. Therefore, from birth, we continuously recalibrate our biological clocks to align with external time. This need for calibration is what gives rise to different time preferences in individuals. Some people have a shorter internal day compared to the external day, making them more inclined to wake up early and become larks. Conversely, if someone's internal day is longer than the external day, they become owls. In fact, Throughout different life stages, time preferences can change continuously. Most children are naturally larks, which parents might relate to when their kids wake them up early in the morning. However, as people grow older, their time preferences tend to shift later, usually reaching their latest point around the age of 20. That's why teenagers often prefer staying up late. Subsequently, time preferences gradually shift earlier again. This explains why older individuals might find it harder to stay up late and start waking up earlier, getting less sleep. At this point, it's essential to be fair to owls. Since the biological clock is an innate biological program, time preferences shouldn't be judged as good or bad. In the past, many cultures believed that early risers were better, while night owls were seen as lazy. This perception was influenced by the common lifestyles of those times. For instance, in agricultural societies, where daylight was crucial for work, early risers naturally thrived. But what about in hunting societies? The author argues that in such societies, night owls actually had a survival advantage. They could better resist sleepiness and remain alert during the night, which provided better opportunities for hunting. Understanding the biological clock has an additional benefit. It helps us realize that late risers aren't necessarily indifferent, and early sleepers aren't necessarily leading dull lives. This broader perspective encourages tolerance for different lifestyles. Now in the next part, we'll talk about how our biological clock serves us. We can sum it up in two words, synchronization and coordination. The biological clock helps our bodies stay in sync with the external environment and internally coordinates various functions. The external synchronization is relatively easier to understand. We live on Earth, which revolves and rotates, creating day and night. Seasons bring changes in temperature, humidity, and light, forming a complex external time structure with various cycles. To survive and thrive on Earth, all living beings must adapt to these changes, 
and they create their own customized time structure to record the patterns of these changes. This structure involves factors like light, temperature, and gravity, forming a network of information. It helps organisms anticipate environmental changes and prepare in advance. This is why the biological clock exists. Let's take an example of a type of seaweed called Euglena gracilis, a single-celled organism. The author observed it for 15 years and found that it follows a regular pattern. During the day, it swims near the surface to undergo photosynthesis and gather energy. At night, it congregates at the sea bottom where the body remains of other organisms serve as nutrients. This behavior is based on factors like light and gravity, forming a biological clock. Similarly, most reptiles are more active during the day because higher daytime temperatures speed up some of their biochemical reactions. This makes them more efficient in finding food and avoiding predators, driven by temperature changes and resulting in a biological clock. In reality, most of these functions cannot be consciously controlled. In other words, the biological clock operates on a microscopic molecular level. In 2017, the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was awarded to three American scientists for their discovery of the molecular mechanisms that regulate circadian rhythms. In simple terms, certain genes in living beings enable proteins to function in a rhythmic manner. For instance, a gene might encode a protein that accumulates during the night and breaks down during the day. Interestingly, while evolution equipped us with these intricate biological clocks, they aren't precise. Most biological clocks, not just in humans, deviate from the exact 24-hour cycle. So why did evolution give us imprecise biological clocks? Think about it, the time structure diagram that organisms develop for external environmental changes doesn't rely solely on Earth's rotation time. There are various other factors like Earth's orbit, 365 days, tidal patterns, 12.5 hours, and lunar cycles, 28.5 days, among others. Moreover, these times aren't fixed, for instance. Earth's rotation is gradually slowing down, which means a day will eventually become 25 hours long. Thus, imprecision in our biological clocks is an advantage, allowing us to adapt to the complexity of a changing environment. But how does our biological clock recalibrate? Signals from the natural environment, such as light and temperature, affect our biological clock. Among these signals, light has the most significant impact. Sunrise and sunset have imprinted deep marks on living beings over billions of years, affecting their biological clocks. So, how do humans receive the signal of light? In our brain's visual center, there's a protein called melanopsin, responsible for detecting changes in light and darkness. This protein is like a key to our biological clock, helping us recalibrate it whenever needed. Even blind individuals, as long as their melanopsin functions properly, can have a normal biological clock. Compared to other organisms, humans have some disadvantages in terms of their physiological conditions. We need heating in winter, lighting at night, and we can't breathe underwater. Over millions of years of evolution, humans managed to survive thanks to their adaptability. But this adaptability can also have downsides. It's prone to errors. For instance, an experiment was conducted where people lived in an underground space without sunlight or clocks. This artificial environment was designed to isolate their biological clocks from external time cues. Interestingly, most participants maintained a regular routine, sleeping for a third of the day and being awake for two-thirds, with cycles roughly around 24 hours. Even their body temperature and other indicators changed following this pattern. However, less than a third of participants did not conform to this pattern. One individual was particularly unique. His bodily indicators followed a roughly 24-hour cycle, but his behavior followed a different rhythm. He slept every few dozen hours and for longer durations. When the experiment ended, this participant was surprised as he thought the two-week experiment had concluded early. In reality, he had been in the lab for 10 days, but feeling like only a week had passed. 
What does this mean? It suggests that the human body operates with at least two systems, one that regulates daily activities like sleep, waking, and eating. These are behavioral rhythms. And another regulates the activities of different organs and tissues, which are circadian rhythms. Circadian rhythms involve various aspects of our body. For example, our body temperature is lower during sleep. Transitioning from sleep to wakefulness follows a certain cycle. Our reaction to alcohol differs in the morning and evening, and our perception of toothache varies throughout the day. Sometimes, these two rhythms are not in sync. The relationship between behavioral and circadian rhythms is somewhat like the conscious and subconscious mind. We can be aware of our behavioral rhythm, just as we are aware of our consciousness. However, no matter how our behavioral rhythm changes, the circadian rhythm continues to operate according to its default setting, beyond our control, much like the subconscious mind. In the experiment in the underground space, the participants' behavioral rhythm gradually extended, but the circadian rhythm did not change. This demonstrates that the more aligned and coordinated our body's rhythms are, the more comfortable we feel. On the contrary, if these rhythms aren't in harmony, we might feel uncomfortable or even become ill. Now let's address the question, why do we feel tired? One significant reason is the lack of coordination among our body's rhythms, a condition most commonly exemplified by jet lag. People who have taken long flights have likely experienced jet lag, which can be incredibly uncomfortable. It might lead to symptoms such as insomnia, reduced attention, impaired coordination, lowered cognitive abilities, and more. These symptoms occur due to the internal misalignment of time. Imagine your body has arrived at its destination, but your organs are still stuck at the departure point. Our body's internal biological clock is not just a timekeeping mechanism. It's a complex coordination system. The melanopsin in the visual center is like the conductor of an orchestra, while other organs and tissues are like different sections of instruments. They cooperate, harmonize, and function together based on the conductor's rhythm, ensuring our body operates smoothly. Biological clocks regulate various aspects of our physical state, from changes in body temperature and hormones to wakefulness, sleep, and cognitive abilities. Many modern health problems are connected to the functioning of our biological clocks. Before the 19th century, people seldom encountered issues like jet lag because societal time was closely aligned with natural time. In modern industrial society, with trains, planes, clocks, and changed social time orders, a disconnect between societal and natural time occurred. After this disconnect, our circadian rhythms still follow natural time, but our behavioral rhythms need to align with societal time. As a result, behavioral and circadian rhythms become out of sync. Add to this factors like overtime, night shifts, staying up late, and compensatory weekend sleep, and lifestyle-related issues become more severe. This means that even if people don't travel, they might experience frequent instances of time lag. In the book, this state is referred to as social jet lag syndrome. For instance, the author suggests that many adolescents who experience insufficient sleep suffer from a form of social jet lag syndrome. Statistics show that owls, those night-oriented individuals, are already in the majority. And during adolescence, our chronotype tends to shift even later. In modern society, School schedules often conflict with students' natural chronotypes. Many experts in the field of chronobiology advocate for delaying school start times, believing it could improve academic performance. A school principal in the UK successfully implemented this idea by shifting classes from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., resulting in a 19% increase in high-achieving students. However, while this idea is promising, Catering to different chronotypes in our tightly interconnected society isn't always practical. Modern life requires individuals to calibrate their daily routines according to societal norms. Think of the biological clock as a person on a swing, each swing representing a day's cycle. 
To precisely control the rhythm and range of the swing, external signals are needed. The most significant signal is light exposure. More light during the day shortens the biological clock cycle, while more light at night lengthens it. Creating changes in light and darkness is the key to calibrating the biological clock. This explains why sleep advice books recommend avoiding screens at night and letting in sunlight in the morning. Living in an environment with regular light changes helps regulate the biological clock. However, while this approach can improve our lives, it's a basic technique. Scientists are exploring more intriguing avenues, such as investigating the connection between chronotype, personality, and career choices. For each of us, there is an interplay among behavioral, circadian, natural, and societal rhythms. Everyone has a unique rhythm, and choosing the right way to align these rhythms is essential. Although using the principles of the biological clock is a fundamental approach to enhancing our lives, more advanced explorations are in progress. These topics span from studying how chronotype relates to traits and how to set treatment times based on the biological clock. In conclusion, our lives are a synchronization of these four types of time, behavioral, circadian, natural, and societal. Each person possesses their own unique rhythm, and adapting to it is key. The book's essence lies in shedding light on the intricacies of biological clocks. It provides systematic and vivid explanations, helping you grasp the core issues and serving as your guide to navigate the complexities. It effectively clarifies common misconceptions about sleep and energy issues faced by many today. Amid the overwhelming online information about biological clocks, this book offers clear and foundational insights, ensuring you're guided by accurate knowledge. Additionally, the book elucidates why certain methods, often emphasized by others, fall short as they primarily aim to change behavioral rhythms. I truly appreciate this book. At last, I have a way to explain to my parents my long-standing difficulty with early mornings. Similarly, when discussing time management methods, some might recommend unconventional routines, like waking up at 4 a.m. for better productivity. However, it's crucial to remember that everyone's life is unique, and what works for one might not work for another. All right, this summarizes the key content of the book. Congratulations on completing another book, and thank you for your support. Goodbye.